the transformative power of computer vision in aircraft maintenance and operation. First of all, before we get started in the different use cases and different utilizations of computer vision, it's good to hold off here for a moment, stop and, and briefly think about what computer vision actually is. And this is a very dry description of the topic of computer vision, namely being it a branch of artificial intelligence that extracts valuable information about the real world from digital images. And I think like everyone who has an iPhone 11 uh, knows like or is already like slightly familiar with the topic of computer vision, um, as in you use your face to log into your um, to log into your um, iPhone as a biometrical authentication. And that's one way of using uh, computer vision um, on your personal on your personal devices or everyone who travels and a lot of people here probably travel or traveled a lot are also familiar with the new uh, onboarding procedures where again like your face is used as a visual recognizer of uh, of you and then allows you to get onto the, into onto the aircraft today i will i will not be talking uh, a lot about biometrics but more like on a, uh, on the spectrum of computer vision that's called object detection and tracking and i'll share with you a couple of use cases beyond the aviation industry so here you can see an example of where computer vision is used to extract valuable information about the real world through the camera that's on top of this uh, autonomous driving car here in san francisco uh, in the bottom left you can see what the camera is seeing so here it detects a police car and all the cars passing by it on the left side and the bigger screen sort of says a visual uh, uh visual representation of the of the real world basically the way that the computer itself sees it so the computer saw a stop sign from the bus and then it stops the computer see here through the camera a uh a bicycle rider um who wants to annoyingly go to the left and all that kind of information uh, it uses a camera and video material to extract extremely valuable information about the world around it this is mind you this is not only um, video but can also you you can also use lidar um, or other radar applications as well to collect that kind of information but then still the uh, the technical aspect uh, remains the same Another example here of where computer vision is a lot used in uh, in a totally different industry again is in um, sports. Um, so sports is a very lucrative uh, um, uh, business. If you want, it's not only entertainment, but really a business and you need to optimize that business. And um, for that, um, a company called Second Spectrum uh, used pre-installed cameras on top of the basketball court and use those cameras to create uh, to create a computer vision application that collects massive amounts of very granular very accurate data on the whole team so you can see when uh, when uh, which player gets the ball with what speed they throw the ball to the other player uh, what speed they're running uh, at what distance they make the most scores um, uh, or less or like does it pay off to go more for the two point shooter or the three point shooter and all that kind of information is combined together um, to make the following decisions, be it uh, getting new talent on a team, uh, training the talents that are already on a team to make specific shoots or um, do specific uh, uh, training uh, uh, processes to optimize uh, the whole team's performance. So it's a really complex situation. Again, a human person would not be or a human coach would not be available, able to process and collect all of that information but through computer vision, the coach has all the information he or she needs to uh, improve the performance of the overall team against each competitor. And then finally, a, a third example of where computer vision is used um, also on a day-to-day -day basis is here in this microscope. Um, this was a Google uh, project um, together with the microscope, uh, microscoping company. Um, they've trained a computer vision application to detect um, cancer cells in human uh, in human uh, 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 tissue, and instead of like the um, yeah the uh, microbiologist or the analyst here or, or who gets tired after watching hours and hours and hours of this kinds of uh, of tissue, um, this person is now being aided by a computer vision application that very quickly detects anomalous uh, cells and circles a 
fluorescent um, circle around it, as you can see that here, basically um, speeding up the whole process of detecting uh, animalis uh, in, uh, in, uh, in human tissue, as well as improving the quality of detecting it, because a computer vision application obviously doesn't get tired of doing that. So the chances of uh, the computer vision miss, uh, application missing any of these um, important diagnostical uh, um, steps, um, it supports the the human in making uh, a better informed decision and um, yeah, having a better di uh, uh, triage, so it's uh, at the end. So those are three examples of where computer vision is used uh, 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 outside of the aviation industry. Um, and I hope this makes clear that computer vision uh, has a tangibly uh, positive impact uh, on society, business and organizations if trained properly and if uh, developed properly. Um, to the training and development, I'll come later, but I'll first highlight two examples of um, yeah, the aviation industry where we use computer vision um, to improve the efficiency and quality of aircraft operation and maintenance. Starting with operations or like a little bit of mix of operations and maintenance. Um, that's the first of all, the turnaround process. Um, we know a hell of a lot about aircraft. Uh, mostly in flight you are using ADS-B data. We know exactly at what point, with what altitude, with what speed uh, an aircraft is heading in what direction. Uh, can collect that most of that data, especially when it's over land, uh, when it's <laughs> crossing the ocean, it's a little bit of a different story, but particularly over land, uh, we can track all of that kind of information and then use that information to predict uh, estimated time of arrival until the minute accurate. Um, predictive maintenance, people who work on Aviatar or are familiar with Aviatar also know that we know basically everything about engine performance uh, and uh, all the different kinds of like compartments coming together to make sure that the aircraft is running smoothly um, and FMP analysis, all that kind of stuff. But as soon as the aircraft is on block uh, being at the gate, um, basically from a, uh, from a data perspective, we're kind of like looking into a black box. So not really knowing exactly one, uh, when uh, offboarding of passengers start or onboarding of new passengers start, when cleaning started or ended, when fueling or refueling started or ended. Um, that's basically from a data perspective, a black box. There are two ways to collect this kind of information as well. One be it uh, ACARS data, um, particularly with the front door open, that's a standard ACARS uh, time stamp that also always has to be set, but it doesn't give you really an answer of, when the uh, um, uh, passengers actually start to uh, on, uh, off board. And the same is true for fueling, uh, but then still you do not really know at what time exactly the fuel truck is there, um, uh, if it's gonna be on time for the, for the pushback and to make its departure slot. All that kind of information is kind of missing at the moment. So what we do, uh, and the same is true for like an other approach to collecting these time stamps, which is called through the a a ACDM system, Airport Collaborative Decision Making Tool, where the various teams or players provide a, a SMS or like a manual timestamp to um, uh, yeah, to give like a little bit more visibility of what's going on on the apron. Also, this can be highly manipulated and not every airport has this. So fully like a, at most airports, definitely a black box situation of the turnaround process. And if there is data, it's not very accurate and not very reliable at all. So we've looked into various ways to collect more reliable or 100% reliable timestamps. And instead of geofencing or GPS, we've, went for a more elegant approach by using the cameras that are already pre-installed at each apron or most of the aprons and um, and uh, use a, and create a computer vision application to extract uh, these, these timestamps from the video material, be it aircraft uh, on stand, GPU connected, the, uh, and all of these operational processes, as well as safety pro related processes like pylons are set on the right uh, areas uh, and with what speed are the different actors or the different objects driving around the aircraft are safety regulations uphold. For instance, when the pushback truck approaches the aircraft, does it push the brakes as it's supposed to do and all that kind of stuff to also collect uh, uh, reliable information about safety related issues. And then finally as well, also from a maintenance perspective, um, set, uh, collect specific uh, video material of specific timestamps, for instance, um, uh, the one 10 seconds before and 10 seconds after an aero bridge is connected or stuff like that. So if there is any damages on the exterior, we can also have that video material retracted. So all of that kind of information here provides um, 
all of the necessary information to uh, smoothen out and make a collaboration between the different agents here a lot better um, on the apron from a safety, from a uh, operational efficiency perspective, and from a collaborative perspective. Other example here is the uh, aircraft uh, exterior damages check. Um, this is a very time-consuming process, as you uh, as you all know. Um, the aircraft is uh, or is uh, uh, on ground for an extensive period of time. It has to be uh, put into the hangar. The whole constellation has to be built around the aircraft um, and to ensure, ensure people can ch uh, check out each part of the aircraft, um, the wings, the uh, uh, vertical stabilizer and all that kind of stuff um, for burn marks or dents and all that kind of stuff and then uh, assess whether this needs to be treated at, uh, right, right, right away and that kind of stuff. So it's very, exp uh, very uh, time consuming and for that reason also costly um, process and Lufthansa Technik and uh, uh, other um, providers have thought about using a drone um, to quickly check all of these aspects of an aircraft. Um, uh, with a, a high HD camera, collect video material of that, and then use a computer to analyze that uh, the video and photo material and do the uh, checks uh, automatically that way. Here you can see an example of that. This one's uh, 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 with Austrian, uh, where they used a drone to uh, yeah uh, uh, to ex to fly around the aircraft itself. Uh, collect HD uh, HD photos of the whole aircraft exterior, um, places where it's very hard for human persons to uh, to inspect uh, this part of the aircraft, unless they, it's very time consuming, obviously, as I said before, and then process that kind of information quickly on a computer. And the computer then provides the information back to the maintenance um, colleagues who then uh, and says the exact spot and can even identify this is this is a spot on the aircraft that needs your attention or this is a spot here. Uh, let's just lock that for any future inspections, all of that kind of stuff. So also do a little bit of like an assessment of where human uh, intervention need, uh, is needed. Again, here computer vision as a yeah quite awesome kind of like application uh, to aid humans in their day to day work. So now We've seen two examples of where computer vision uh, can really help out in the aviation industry, but then the tricky question is how to actually start creating a robust computer vision application, uh, assess where it makes sense and where it doesn't make sense, um, and what are the like kind of like hurdles to create a, uh, a computer vision application. And the obvious way to start, the obvious place to start, obviously, is defining clear business uh, needs. This sounds a little bit trivial. But it's not always the case because a lot of people are like flashed by and say, oh, wow, computer vision is so great. But um, because the whole process is quite um, complex and can be quite expensive if um, if it doesn't start with clear, clearly shaped uh, uh, business needs, um, this is really a crucial and important point. So for the example of the turnaround processes, uh, the very clear user needs uh, were defined as we need to have uh, real-time situation or awareness within like one uh, with, within fractions of a second um, and we need to focus on uh, these five critical timestamps otherwise it doesn't make sense for us to include this um, same is true for the AI drone so to say where you'll have to have like a categorization of the various kinds of damages you want to have uh, uh, part of this so you have a very clear understanding what does the computer vision application need us need to do so we can uh, be aided in our day-to-day -day work uh, these are then packaged into user stories. Uh, then we collect test data, be it for, eight, for instance, 48 hours of turnaround in a specific uh, position, or lots of high quality kind of like um, photos of damages on the aircraft exterior, which are then annotated, which is very laborious manual work, um, where everyone uh, sits behind their laptop, gets a lot of uh, video and photo material, and then like clicks around the various objects that need to be detected uh, in the future automatically by a computer vision ap application. Then the training of the actual application starts, and then model catalog, and then testing, and then you keep on like continuously improving that, and then also include more training and test data down the road. And that, with that, I actually already highlighted was basically the biggest bottleneck of creating any robust computer vision application, and, and that's uh, getting hands on very quality training material. And I'll explain how that works uh, in the next couple of steps. Um, 
as you guys know, and I don't have to explain that, scratches, burn marks, and dents on an aircraft's exterior um, is very expensive to create that just for training a computer vision algorithm to then re uh, uh, then to then then be trained to detect that as well. Um, so what we've done here together with Lufthansa Technik was a research project to see if we can find a different way to collect that training material for a computer vision application. And we've done that through simulation. So we took a model to scale um, uh, A320, and then we've simulated that virtually in the hall or in the hangar here as well. And um, what we've defined uh, as a next step is the uh, snake kind like path that the drone has to fly around the aircraft to be ensure that we have all of the uh, all of the uh, critical parts of an aircraft um, at least being uh, seen, so to say, by the drone once by the, its HD camera, uh, as well as having the right distance to the aircraft exterior and all the kind of stuff to make sure that we have, you can see a little bit like a bump here in the, on the top that it has to move a little bit closer to the aircraft exterior to make sure that we have a, uni, a unified great view of the whole Air, aircraft's exterior, and we've simulated that as well. So instead of like just trying it out millions of times uh, in an actual hangar with an actual drone, we use simulation here to come up with the most ideal approach of flying around the aircraft. And the same is true also when it comes to like the benefits of simu simulation. Instead of creating tons of training material for a computer vision application and different light conditions, we also use simulation to um, to create 20 different environments um, to collect the training material, be it like early in the morning and middle of the night, um, sunset, all of these different kinds of like uh, light situations um, have a huge impact on the uh, 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 on the training material that we're going to be able to collect specifically because the aircraft's exterior at most airlines is white, meaning that if the sun or TL lights shine on the light exterior, and it reflects into the camera, then obviously you have a big problem because then you cannot really detect what's what's happening there because you see only the reflection. And for that, you need to optimize both the algorithm, the detection algorithm from the computer vision application, as well as the pattern in which it flies. Yeah. And then here you can see a video as an example. I've basically already explained <laughs> uh, what it does here, but you can see the first step of the snake path uh, of the aircraft uh, flying around. That's the big, very big screen here. Um, the lighter, smaller screen down here to the right, you can see the simulated exterior of the aircraft. Um, and um, that exterior of the aircraft, so this part uh, was then used again by our um, data scientists and machine learning engineers to create a computer vision application or try and train computer vision application to use simulation to detect uh, aircraft damages also uh, in reality. So to take this from the simulated version and then check that uh, the quality of the computer vision application also with, uh, with uh, test material from actual aircraft. Here you can see one, a, a bigger version of that, uh, of the example here, uh, where you can see the, there was a smaller right version we can see the computer vision application detecting all kinds of like small spots. Those are the green, uh, the green points. And then that's meant with tracking with optical flow is that it says these are the exact spots where they are. So it doesn't, it does, doesn't, it recognizes this is burn mark one, for instance, and then can categorize that in the system. So it doesn't see it like completely as unique features, but you'll have to create a computer vision application that's going to be able to both detect a burn mark and then say that's burn mark one and do and not like create a couple of like instances out of that. Um, this was a great use case that we've done together with uh, Lufthansa Technik here. Um, the outcome, um, as you can see here a little bit, is the uh, is a high detection rate uh, based on simulated data for our computer vision application. Uh, I think it's pretty cool that the simulation is so lifelike that you can see the TL lights reflected here. And then still it detects here a, a, a dent in the aircraft's exterior. Uh, and now we're currently in a situation to adapt this um, to a real world footage as well uh, to make sure that the application runs extremely smooth, not only in a simulated related reality, but also in a real reality in the real world. Um, and with that, just through simulation like this one, you can cut uh, development time and costs like to a fraction 
uh, instead of using actual actual real life uh, 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 training material for a computer vision application. So with that, um, I've given quickly an update or like an overview of what computer vision is, how it's applied in the aviation industry, and uh, with two use cases as well as the big uh, uh, bottlenecks in creating your own computer vision application um, and how you can uh, circumvent or shortcut that a little bit through simulation. Um, and I hope that um, yeah, you guys leave with the impression that computer vision can be a true superpower that aids humans uh, uh, by providing more quality information in fr a fraction of the time to make so people can make better informed decisions.